Welcome guys to Electrofag's YouTube channel with me, the Bearded Benzi. So today guys, we're just gonna go over some battery safety for you guys. Keep yourself nice and safe. So guys, you've all seen what goes on in stores. Everyone knows about battery safety, but yet not a lot of people actually know about battery safety. So we're going to go over a couple of different types of batteries, what you need to look out for, what you need to watch, how to store them, how to charge them. And I'm going to give you an example of a really, really bad battery. So I'm just going to kick it off straight away. And we're going to go in with the standard Samsung 25R battery, which as you can see there, 18650 25R. One thing with batteries that is commonly mistaken is their amp rating. So there are loads of tools out there guys to make sure that you're 100% safe, especially if you're using these in a mech mod. Not so much in a regulated mod because that does everything for you and make sure that you're safe anyway, but especially with a mech mod, you never want to build too low. And that is the biggest cause of people blowing batteries up is improper use and going too, ohm, too low with their ohms drawing too much amperage out of the battery. So Samsung rate these at a 25R. They're not 25 amp, they're a 20 amp, 20 amp continuous. I'd go on the rule of thumb of just using these as a 19 amp battery, just so you're 100% safe, because you never want to draw too much out. As soon as you start drawing too much, the temperature of the battery starts rising. As soon as it reaches its critical point, it starts venting, that's when you're in trouble. So each battery has its own wrap, and you'll see there on the positive pin that it does have a white isolator. That is to stop you from crossing from your positive to your negative anode on the battery and then causing an inadvertent short. So that was one type of battery. Box on the other side there. Okay, you tell them well prepped. So then we've got the Samsung 30Q. So this is the exact same size as the one you've just seen before, except the MAR rating on this battery is slightly higher. So the 25R is a 2500 amp, 2500 milliamp hour battery. This is a 3000 milliamp hour battery. So it's a little bit larger capacity, lasts a little bit longer on your daily usage devices. These are better for something like your drag twos, something like that, something you're gonna be using all of the time, just with that extra little bit of kick, extra little bit of life to them. So there's that one. Again, another example of a 3000 mAh battery is the LG HG2. So again, these guys, run of the mill, 18650, standard everyday use, work in every single regulated mod that there is. There is one thing to watch out though with LG batteries. Now, it's not LG's fault. It's got nothing to do with LG. And when you know a real one, you'll spot a fake a mile off. But LG is the most commonly copied battery. Having a fake battery is not the best idea in the world. It's the same as having two different sets of batteries. So for instance, you'd never put a 25R and a HG2 together and use them both in the same mod because that's just stupid. One, they're two different my ratings, two different draw rates. It's just not good. Always pair your batteries. Even if you've got a set of batteries and one of them is, is gone, replace two at least. And you've always got paired batteries. That's just the safest thing to do. The more you cut down on potential errors, the safer you're gonna be long-term. So if you've got four batteries, for instance, one of them's a bit knackered, like the one that I'm gonna show you, always replace two so you've always got a, a set of paired batteries so that's it for those just be careful especially while i've got this hg2 in my hand let me just get rid of this 25r there's a couple of things to look out for on the hg2 on the hg2s that you'll be able to tell that are fake so i'm just going to lean forward a little bit because you can see the wrapping on there a lot of the fakes don't actually have this caution label on them uh, but what you'll commonly find as well is they'll double print they'll be missing the QR codes on the wraps and you can also tell just on the base here the cut of the wrap on here is nice 
and it's a perfect circle and is the same distance on either side. You'll get fake ones where it'll be thicker on one side than it will on the other side or it'll be a tight circle and it won't be cut straight, it'll be more like an oval. There's loads of key things that you should look for with batteries, especially when you want to keep yourself safe. We've all seen the horror stories of batteries exploding and that literally 90% of the time comes down to improper care. It's not improper use, it's improper care because people just don't they just don't seem to take it seriously and um, so if you've seen um, especially my channel on the electrophoric Ellsmere port page I've been on some rants about battery safety um, but before we get onto the rant side of it there's another battery that I have to hand here which is slightly larger than the other ones this is an AWT 2700 so the numbers of those batteries equate to length and diameter so as you can see on an 18650, it's smaller and thinner. The 2700 is slightly larger and also slightly larger in diameter. But with that comes bigger ratings. So this is a 4200 mile battery and this is rated at 40 amps. That's what they say it's rated at. Again, I always take some off that just to be 100% sure that you've got a continuous amp rating. Pulsing is slightly different, but I wouldn't bear too much weight on the pulse amp rating of a battery because it's more continuous users that this is aimed at. I mean, if you're already looking at your pulse, you're already well into battery safety anyway, so you already know well what you're doing, uh, especially for the likes of competition mods and stuff like that. They're always 100% and they take battery safety mega, mega serious. Um, I wish we had a place that I could show you what an 18650 does, but we don't. But I'm sure I will get Patrick to put a link into a video to show you how bad 18650s can go if you do not look after them properly. So these ones are generally in more higher mods. Something like, I don't know, your Vupu X217. Prime example. Dual use, you can use both size batteries in that particular mod. You can run standard 18650s or you can run the 2700s. 2700s just give you a better battery life overall. It means you don't have to charge it as often. They are a little bit more expensive, but in this industry, you do get what you pay for and it's always worth spending that extra little bit more just to make sure you're 100% safe. If you see a battery that's three quid, chances are it's probably fake. Chances are it's probably gonna blow up in your pocket. So just be careful what you're doing when it comes to purchasing batteries. So now we get to the fun part. So this battery was actually confiscated by me uh, in store because a customer pulled this out of their pocket. Now, before I do, I'm just gonna free advertisement. You know what we're like. We do these battery sleeves. These are amazing and will save you completely. So this battery is now in one of these because it terrifies me. Shaking a little bit because it's it's a bad it's a bad example of improper battery care. Um, so this was actually given to me as an example, and she pulled this out of her bag exactly like this. Wasn't it in any protective casing? Now there are plastic cases that you can put your batteries in, and we do do battery sleeves. So if you pop down to any electrofag store grab a couple of these we don't charge you because we want you to be safe so make sure you go and get in some of those and plus again more free advertising it's got holes on it what's better than that but this is what you should be looking out for so on the other batteries that you'd seen the wrap is perfect so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this with me so you can hear me so you can get a proper look I don't know whether that's there but you can see there that most of that wraps missing on the bottom that on itself is bad enough you should never ever ever use a battery when it has rips especially that bad but this is the kicker so I'm just gonna grab the other version of this battery the actual good version of this battery to show you the difference so there on the back dodgy one massive rips in the bottom colors slightly faded this one perfect but the biggest one for me is that white ring yeah, well, this one doesn't have it. That is dangerous. And like I said, I wish we had somewhere that we could show you exactly what goes on. But 
we don't have that but i can stress to you now it is not pretty at all it is far from pretty and they go pretty quick i've experienced one going um a while ago in the Ellsmere port store uh, and it's something that i never want to experience again um but yeah look at that that's just waiting to vent that's just an accident waiting to happen so let's move back i'm getting good at this stuff stay thank you so with this that white ring on here you can see i'll get um a picture added in of this so you can see exactly what i'm on about here but on the positive there is a tiny gap before it reaches the negative no no that is what that ring is for and that's to stop any shorts on the top of that battery so having a battery like this especially if you come to my shop in Ellsman Port, I will confiscate it and give you a discount on a new battery because I want you to be 100% safe but this to me is a major major no-no you can rewrap batteries I'm not I'm not opposed to rewrapping batteries but I'm also not for rewrapping batteries I always deal with it as if I've got a nick in it, it's just time to replace it. It's better to be safe than sorry. Yes, a wrap's going to cost you two quid, it's going to take you two minutes to wrap it, but wrapping your battery also can pose risks if you're not doing it correctly, which we'll probably do in a later video, just as a little tutorial for those who do actually want to do that. Not that we're condoning that you do do that, but still, people do it. People enjoy wrapping their batteries. And there's loads of different styles of wraps, different designs. There's clear, you can have patterns on them. You have skulls, your favorite juice. Six Licks do them. There's, there's quite a few different options on wraps. But again, you're heating that because they are heat shrunk. So you do have to apply heat to it. So that's where it starts getting a little bit edgy because if you use the wrong equipment to do it, you can still inadvertently overheat the battery and cause a vent just by wrapping a battery, which is why we don't explicitly tell you to wrap batteries. But each to their own. Some people will listen, some people won't. It's your own, it's your own choice. But we'll, we'll go and do one of those videos just so you know what to expect i will try and arrange it as well that we can set one of these off in a controlled way so you know what goes on because i think it's relevant that you actually watch that firsthand by one of us guys and seeing what generally happens um so now we're going to move on to charging because charging is one of the biggest sources of in-house errors that people make so we've got a number of customers and we tell them all the time never ever leave your mod on charge overnight anything can happen when you're using a regulated device and you leave it on charge one yes it does charge your batteries but there are a few drawbacks to charging it through your mod it charges slower it can charge unevenly which isn't good for the health of your battery long term and two, sometimes your mod can fail and it'll just put direct power to your batteries. And that's where fires ended up coming from, was people just leaving them on charge overnight. They've dropped their mod a few times. They've kicked it down the street. It's got some damage to it and some part of that board isn't working correctly. So it puts too much power to the batteries. They end up heating and then the proverbial happens and it ends up blowing your bedroom up. That's why this video to me was so important that we got out there is to stop that from happening i'm the biggest believer in like i said if my battery looked like that i'd replace it i wouldn't even bother wrapping it straight replacement just to be 100 percent safe no one wants a battery venting um so then we move on to bay chargers so you've got like your nikor i2s i4s i8s you your efes loop v6s which by the way we stock at electrofag so if you drop a, a website here wherever he wants to put it on here i'm just going to point everywhere so i've covered everywhere there you go so wherever the website pops up just go on there we have all the links on there and there are some descriptions on the chargers on there for you as well personal preference is the nikor i4 um one i love the quality of their products uh, i've never heard anyone say a bad word about nikor products there are a couple of horror stories about your cheaper battery chargers, so stay away from them and go for a brand that you trust, like Nikkor, Efest. 
they're just two of the ones that I'd go to just because they've got a very large standing in the vape industry and they know exactly what they're doing. Um, bait chargers are the single best thing for batteries. One, they charge them at a consistent rate. They charge them both at the same rate as well. Some of them, like the Loop V6, do have a fast charge feature, so if you are in a pinch, you can just put two amp charge through them. It's not advisable long term to keep doing fast charges because you're just going to end up cycling the battery too much. So it is a handy feature to have if you're in a rush, you forgot your battery is dead, slam them in, press the button, boom, fast charge. That's you've done. But you should always, always, always with batteries make sure they're completely flat. So as soon as your mod tells you your batteries are flat, pop them in the bay charger. As soon as they're full, take them out. Pop them in your little electrified battery sleeve, which you should have. And if you have not, pop down to the store again. I'm just going to keep throwing that one at you because I like doing it. Um, but as soon as they're full, take them out. Yes, battery chargers do stop putting current through once they're fully charged. However, again, you're still dealing with electronics and there could be a mishap. It could be an old charger that you're using that could have a slight fault in it that hasn't recognized that the batteries are fully charged. So as best course, best practice, keep you 100% safe. As soon as they're full, take them out. And then put them in your little electrified see, see how I did that lens so quick after the last one. Put them in your little electrified battery sleeve. You're safe. And in that, nothing can touch them. So you can't have a short while it's in this because you can't push metal through these so whilst I've got this in my hand the base and the top of this are really thick for that exact reason so because when that's in this is where it gets fiddly now especially when you're trying to do it in one go when they're in this is just your negative anode anyway so the sides are enough to keep the battery in keep it safe and stop it sliding around because they are rubber but the ends are especially thick now that's done for a reason so you can have no accidental punctures through those which again if you've got that battery on its own in your pocket with keys or change there's the potential for that to short potential for it to overheat and then explode in your pocket and from experience that happens within about 40 seconds so unless you pick it up straight away and know immediately that it's gone chances are that that's going to continue going off in your pocket until it's too late for you to remove it again there are loads of videos elsewhere on youtube that will show you the effects of that but i will arrange if we can to give you a demonstration of a battery venting so you know 100 what happens and how serious we take it it's the same in all electrified stores we do have these but we do take massive emphasis on keeping you guys safe with batteries because it's not nice and we don't want none of you lot to go through that i mean you're part of the electrified family so we're going to treat you like family so just keep yourself safe at all times make sure you're using the correct bay charger make sure you're buying brand new if you can like I say, second-hand battery chargers, you never know how they've been treated if they've been dropped, certain part of the circuitry is broken, it still charge your battery, but it may overcharge your battery. There's all sorts of issues. So if, you, if you're not 100% sure, it's always better to just buy a new set of batteries and a new battery charger. Yes, you're gonna be spending about 40 to 50 quid, depending on which way you go, depending on which battery charger and so on and so forth. But to me, spending that money is a lot better than that going off in your pocket and you've not been in work for a long time or not been able to do stuff as you normally would, days out, days out with the kids, stuff like that. That's why we're doing this particular one. Uh, so I think I've rambled on enough uh, for now for you guys. Just remember, a little bit of a corny line, wrap them. You wrap yourself, wrap your batteries. But available at all electrified stores, Make sure you're popping down and getting some. Just tell the guys that you've seen it on the video. You want some free battery, battery sleeves. The guys will hook you up. Um, so with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel because we have got so much more coming. In fact, you're probably going to see my face in the future reviewing a kit. And then again in the future, probably reviewing some liquids. And then you'll probably see me popping up randomly on the Electrofag Facebook page, the main page, as well as my Ellsmo Port page, the List Card page, uh, and wherever else I fancy showing up that week. Um, I like doing, 
a little random trip around once in a while but make sure you're dropping those like buttons on here guys make sure you're all subscribing again i'm gonna do the point because i don't know where he's gonna put the thing so we'll do a little dance i'm just gonna make this a thing of my videos now so it'll be around here somewhere so again guys make sure you're dropping those likes make sure you're subscribing to the channel make sure you check us out on facebook and the website will be again somewhere around for you guys to make sure you're safe see you later